we've been looking at uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, kind of some of the things that that people are allowing their imaginations to run off with, and kind of people blowing some things out of proportion and not really taking the right message out of other things. So just to be sure, okay, we don't know if this is, you know, if we're getting to the last part of the last end times or anything, last days or anything, we, we don't know. Um, but the message that we need to get from this isn't, let's all be afraid. <laughs> that's, that's not really the message that I think uh, God wants us to have. So uh, the Bible talks about uh, Jesus, and as he was getting ready to face the cross, which I think we can all agree would be a very terrifying experience um, for us, uh, it says that he endured, endured the cross uh, because on account of the glory that was that was coming, the um, the outcome of it. Um, and with that being said, you know we really don't know if this is the beginning of the end of the end or whatever, uh, or not. But we also might have to endure fear and possibly the end times uh, for the sake of what is coming. It's like, for instance, death. We will all have to endure the fear of death. Um, we won't all be dying on a cross. <laughs> See what I mean? But at the same time, we will still have to be enduring um, unpleasant things, whether that be uh, maybe a slow and painful death. I mean, we hope not, but we really don't know how our life is going to go. Uh, maybe it's going to be just uh, a fearful existence, um, like the people who endured... Uh, the people who were born and endured the First and Second World War and the um, uh, the Great, uh, what was it called, um, when the recession, um, dang it, I wish I could remember what it was, what it was called. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, the people who lived in that period of time, uh, the Spanish flu was right around there too, they had to endure a lot of things. Um, that were very scary. And so we are definitely not promised a comfortable life, a life of no fear, uh, a life where nothing fearful happens, I should say that. Um, th th that's definitely definitely not true. We, we, might, we might have to endure those things. But we shouldn't lose sight of what's coming after those things. You know, in, in heaven, things are, things are going to be so good that they will... Uh, blow back, you know, whatever unpleasant things we had to endure here. So God doesn't want us to be in constant fear. And I think that that's something that people are kind of losing in this. Uh, even Christians, um, they're not really asking the right questions. We are not really asking the right questions. It's more about, should I be afraid or should I not be afraid? Um, you know, should I be screaming in fear? Should I be, should I work myself up? Should I, you know, all these different things. And it's like, well, <laughs> God doesn't want us to be in constant fear as Christians. If we're putting our trust in him, you know, we're saved, there's really nothing that we should be fearful of. And um, our focus should more be on um, witnessing to people, on, on telling people about Jesus, on, 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 on those kinds of things. Um, when, we, when we see the day drawing near, the, the end drawing near, it should, it should um, encourage us on to not just uh, better moral living, but it should also encourage us towards further obedience. Um, indeed, as we trust God more, as we as we put our faith in Him, it should produce obedience. Not just, as I said, uh, living a moral life, uh, allowing our, our thoughts to be changed according to His Word, all that stuff. Yes, absolutely. But also, to the extent of loving people, serving our enemies, uh, witnessing to people, uh, inviting people into church, those kinds of things. Um, Christians do not exist for the sole purpose of being a Christian. <laughs> we exist so that we can honor God, so that we can love and serve people, so that we can tell people about Jesus, so that we can build God's kingdom, those kinds of things. Um, and there's kind of, excuse me, there's kind of this big push nowadays that Christians should exist so just for the sole purpose that they can have existed, and so that we can comfort one another in, in our own comfort. Like, oh wow. I'm a Christian, now I can just sit back and relax and have a good, easy life. And that's totally not what the Bible is talking about, ever. Um, obviously, God doesn't want us to be in constant fear uh, and anguish uh, as his people, but that's more a choice of ours whether or not to trust in God or whether or not to trust in 
you know, our fears and what people are saying and all those kinds of things. See, people will always be here to blow things out of proportion. Some of them will be true, some of them won't be true. Like you see people get caught up in the whole argument about global warming. Is it real or not? It's not really relevant whether it's real because, you know, we're called to be good stewards of the earth. So if, if we can do something better, then we should. Uh, and then also it's not really relevant because this world is passing away anyways. <laughs> but then also it's not really relevant because, well, you see what I'm saying. Um, God doesn't want us to live with that just heavy fear covering us. And and even if, whether it's true or not, global warming, whether it's true or not, it's not a thing where, um, do I have an excuse to be afraid? And that's really what's going on a lot in the culture today, is people want to have an excuse to have fear rather than to trust in God. And the thing the, the thing about the pandemic if it's, is it's given as that reason. Now, for people who are looking for a reason to be afraid, they can. Now there's a reason why I can sit inside my house and not communicate with people and just close myself off from the world. Because it's okay now because, hey, there's a pandemic. And it's it's one of those things where it's like, not really the message that God was trying for us to get. Um, so as we trust him through these things, it's going to quiet, it's going to quiet our, quiet our, uh, our anxiety and it's going to push us on to further obedience, which means that we have to go out and reach people. And that's hard when everything seems to be closed off and everybody's living inside their houses. Um, but the Great Commission is what it's called. The great last thing that Jesus said before he left, go out into all the world, <laughs> you know, and and even um, the, the, the pandemic isn't a reason for us to stop. It's a reason for us to keep on um, reaching out because Jesus said that the, that, the, that the field is white. It's, it's ready ripe, I should say. Um, I, I have in my picture a cotton field where the cotton is all ready to be picked. It's it's white, but that's not, that doesn't really sound good. Let me re-say that. The fields are, are, are ready for the harvest, and that's still a thing now. It hasn't gone away, and that's still our mission as Christians. And so just because we have to think of different ways to do it and maybe take a little more uh, precautions or mm, be more courageous in how we do it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it either. Um, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, is, is what the Bible says. And that's important because when, when God does work in us, he doesn't, um, he doesn't, okay, so God saves us and he says, now be afraid of everything. No, no, no. The spirit that God gives us, um, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in us, it gives us a sound mind, not, not, not a fearful, chaotic uh, spirit. And that's more of something that the world gives us. That's something that we work ourselves up in, in, in our minds. That's something that maybe we were born with or, you know, those kinds of things. But God wants us to have a sound mind as we're going forward uh, in these things. Now, obviously, if we're living in, in living in sin, you can't expect to be at peace when you're living in sin. I'm not trying to say, hey, live however you want. I think that's been pretty clear from what I've said, just clarifying uh, there. Um, so what we have to do then is to rest in God's promises and not let our minds run wild. Reel it in, you know. Um, everybody's taking offense about everything nowadays. Um, you know, you see really best friends torn apart, uh, really for nothing, for no reason. And, uh, you know, people not trying to work through it, not trying to, to build together. You know what happens if you don't try to be intentional in a marriage um, about being on the same page? Eventually, you as a couple drift apart. And it's the exact same thing with, with the church, too. We have to actively pursue the, pursue a purpose, pursue a goal, unite ourselves with each other. Um, you know, try and overlook offenses. Try and, and be reconciled together. Try and build each other up. Th that's the calling of the church. Not to sit at our houses and be bitter and, and complain about stuff and look for things to be offended about and I, I'm offended and I'm not going to tell you why and that kind of stuff. That, that's not helpful for the church to move forward. It's important as we get to these times that we stay connected and we keep building into each other's lives because this pandemic won't be for forever. The way you're feeling right now won't be for forever. But what you do in this time will have, you know, um, ramifications much, much further down the road than the pandemic. And I think that that would be a very good thing to remember. Um, you're going to see a lot of people who um, feel very guilty and ashamed for, for how things went. You're going to see a lot of uh, parents who abused their kids 
and feel bad about it during the pandemic. You're going to see a lot of people who uh, ended their marriage and just feel terrible about it. You're going to see people who whose friendships came to an end, and it's just you see them just torn apart and stuff. And it's 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 a terrible thing. And I'm not, and I genuinely hope that those people find a way to to you know to to be built up again, you know. And and so just hope that that gave you something to think about there. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention before we. Um, before we close out, is there was a peace treaty that was made um, a few a few weeks back with uh, President Trump and the Middle East and all these different things, and a lot of people brought up the thing about oh it's it's he's the Antichrist or whatever it's a it's a sign of the end times. Well, this is actually taken from a passage in Daniel, the the prophet Daniel, where it seems like that's really not what he's talking about. And I will go back and read some of it it's in Daniel chapter nine. Um, I'll start in verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, an anointed one, okay, the, uh, that is a Messiah. Messiah means anointed one, um, so a Christ, shall be cut off and shall have nothing. Now, this is starting to sound a little bit like Jesus, okay? And I'll show you why in just a second. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That sounds like what happened in 70 AD where um, the Jews rebelled and the Romans, uh, Roman soldiers destroyed uh, Jerusalem and destroyed the uh, Herod's temple that was there. Its end shall come with the flood, and to the end there shall be, uh, and to the end there shall be war. So ongoing wars, okay, all right. Desolations are decreed, okay. Verse twenty-seven, and he shall make a strong covenant with many. So who's this he? Is it the people of the prince who's to come, or is it the anointed one? Now. In my opinion, it's anointed one, and I'll tell you why, because of this. He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. Who put an end to the sacrifices? Jesus, when he died. See, the, uh, the old law was in effect all the way until Jesus instituted the new covenant, right? So then who really did away with the with the sacrifices and offerings. Well, Jesus did. So that would seem like the anointed one is Jesus, and the anointed one was the one who ended that. So with that being said, could we possibly take this to mean something else where it's the people of the prince to come or the prince himself or whatever, um, whatever's going on there? Let's see. In verse 26, I think it was. Um, sh should we take it then to mean for sure that this is talking about what's going on right now? Well, let me just give you a little clue. Whenever people are going through very scary situations, the first thing religious people do is they try to make it a thing about the end times, even if it's not a thing about the end times. And unfortunately, what happens is they'll take different Bible verses and they'll just kind of rip them out of context and say, this has to be what this is about because this is what we're going through. Therefore... Or they'll they'll do they'll they'll do a lot of fear mongering. It's like people who claim to be um, psychics, and occasionally they'll be right. So they'll say, "Oh, all these things will definitely happen," and they're only loosely based, kind of on one out of context verse, like the whole thing about the mark of the beast. Um, well, they're gonna be they're gonna be chipping people and, and 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 tracking people. Yeah, that makes technologically that makes sense. I can understand why people would uh, want to get microchipped. I can understand why technology would move that way. I, I understand these things. But science fiction claimed the same things. You know, um, besides religious people, they claim that people would be connected with robotics and those kinds of things. And we're starting to see those po the possibility of those things coming. Um, uh, in uh, Dune, uh, this, the, the Dune series, there's there's people who have their head, their brains removed from their body and are put in these in these tanks. In the show Futurama, that same thing happens. People get their heads taken off and put in these tanks that preserves their life. And you're seeing people trying to work out that technology right now. Just because somebody looked into the future and said that is probably where technology is going to go doesn't mean necessarily that that is what the Bible is also talking about. Because remember, in every generation, people take something that's happening and they say, this is what was prophesied in the Bible. Maybe, maybe, and I'm definitely not saying that I'm for sure right. I could be wrong. I, I, I know that. I understand that. But I'm not the one who's making a claim that's saying this is for sure, talking about Trump, President Trump and the, um, and the peace treaty in the Middle East. So you mean to tell me that any time that a peace treaty at all is, is made, it's for sure talking about that passage? Well, if you 
think about it, a lot of people have made peace, have made treaties. Uh, a covenant of many, that could be referring to World War II, where there was a, a group of nations against a group of nations. There was a covenant of many. See what I mean? Like, it, you, you can't just jerk parts out and say this is for sure that, and then scare yourself about it. It's not helpful. Um, we, we might have one more series, in, one more lesson in the series of Apocalypse now, um, but that's where we're going to stop uh, today. Um, it won't be too much longer before we start having, um, you know, uh, having lessons again uh, on Tuesdays. So I'm looking forward to that and have a lot of really exciting uh, stuff coming up. Um, stuff like finding the will of God and uh, just a lot of a lot of good stuff. Um, uh, some philosophy too, uh, C.S. Lewis and those kinds of things. Um, I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the day. I hope to see you guys tonight at church. Um, there, we had some awesome snow, got to plan it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And, excuse me. And, uh, okay. Uh, don't forget, guys, it is flu season. And uh, RSV and all those things are going around. So make sure to, uh, to watch out. A lot of people are getting sick. Uh, I'm not just talking about, you know, COVID. I'm also talking about the other things too. Um, uh, so, okay. I will see you guys. And, uh, have a great week.